Hi, it's Nell, and today's video is all about plant humidity. More specifically, how I create or increase the humidity for my houseplants. Stick around for that. So, if you like videos about gardening both indoors and outdoors, be sure to subscribe. I post videos here on YouTube about every two weeks or so. There are a lot in the archives for you to check out. I would love to have you subscribe and if you're already subscribed, thank you. So the blog post that goes along with this video is already up. You can find it in the description box down below at the top or on my website joyousgarden.com and along with all these points I'm going over here you can also find answers to questions asked about plant humidity and also a list of low humidity tolerant houseplants. Ah yes, yeah, so last week we had snow on the Catalina Mountains just over here and today it's a beautiful early February day. It's about 73 degrees. So like everywhere you just don't know about the weather but I'm happy to be able to film outdoors again. So I thought this was a good video to do for winter because it's a notoriously dry time so I thought this might help you out if you're looking for some ways to increase the humidity in your home for your plants. Uh, probably the most telltale sign that house plants need more humidity indoors is uh, they turn brown. Either the leaf tips will turn brown and or the leaf edges will turn brown. So there are varying opinions as to whether some or all of these methods work and I never paid attention to most of them because I've lived in much more humid climates than here. Here being Tucson, Arizona, I moved to the Sonoran Desert about four and a half years ago and I have a lot of houseplants. Most of them are tropical or sub tropical so that's why I am um, always trying to find a way to up the ante on the humidity factor. So subtropical and tropical plants do best with a humidity between 50 and 60 percent. We humans apparently do best with a humidity around you know 50 percent so that's a nice sweet spot to uh, aim for but here in the desert, uh, like for instance today, the humidity is 19%. Last summer we had a very hot and dry, long summer, and some days the humidity was like 5%. So I'm always you know, looking for some way to uh, help my green babies out. So these methods don't turn my home, my entire home, into the tropics, but they do work as a momentary fix or in the area where I have the things I am going to talk about. So the first thing I'm going to start with is the one that I think most people can agree works the best and that is a humidifier. Now I have three of them at the moment, one in my dining room living room, one in my kitchen, and then one in the bedroom. And I run them, I don't run them every day, I probably run them five or uh, about five days a week for about six hours or so a day. The one in the bedroom runs overnight and that works, that can work for the room. They will tell you how much square footage they cover. For instance, is this going to cover 200 square feet, 300 square feet, 400. Mine are mainly smaller ones, but I have two on order from a relatively new company called, you know, Canopy. They haven't come because they're so popular. But what they do apparently instead of putting out moist, um, moist moisture is they put out hydrated air and they also have a filter to change so there's less chance of that bacteria and the mold building up because that's one thing with the humidifier is that it can transmit mold and bacteria if you don't clean it on a regular basis. 
which I do. I clean mine every two or three days because I don't want all that all that stuff, you know, flo <laughs> floating around in the air. But just like anything, you can overdo it, you know, with the humidifiers. So don't get too many of them going in one room all the time. And the next is to group your plants together. Plants transpire and they release moisture, so it just makes sense if they're in groupings, they're going to help each other out. I have mine on plant stands together, um, on tables, and in groupings on the floor. Next is saucers filled with rocks, pebbles, or glass chips, and then that is filled with water. So these are considered a mini humidity tray and it's just good right for the plant around it. But it's, um, this method is commonly used for orchids and African violets. Oh, and this here is an epiphyllum. It's a curly orchid cactus and it likes a good amount of humidity. So I have the tray or the saucer with the pebbles under here. Next is bowls filled with water. And I have three of them on that table, that long table that you saw, and I'm not quite sure if they do that much, but I just keep them filled with water and again, it, it would be a fix for right around the uh, immediate plant that it is next to. <laughs> then we have misting. And misting has been around for a long, long time. I mist my house plants, the ones that really enjoy it. I do it about every two or three weeks and I mist the air around them and then I let it fall on the foliage. You don't want to keep the foliage consistently wet, especially at night or the top of the soil because that will breed mold. Oh, the only plants which I mist on a more regular basis are my air plants. I just have a few of them because it is a little bit of a struggle to grow them here in the desert. It's just a lot of work. So I mist my air plants once a week and I soak them once a week also. And the next method I think must feel so good to plants and that is to take them to a sink or a shower and spray them off. I do this uh, to my small and medium-sized plants every three weeks or so, and I just let them hang out in either the sink or the shower for a bit, and they just go, oh, feels like a tropical rain. And it also helps to keep them clean. And the next method, the next and last method, is to place your plants in the kitchen near the sink or in a bathroom where you frequently shower. This way they can enjoy a little bit of the temporary humidity moisture that is happening in that room. And I use this method again for my air plants. I have them hanging I have the small ones hanging close to the, the kitchen sink. By the way, so as I said, these are three plants which like a fair amount of humidity, as most of my plants do. This is the curly orchid cactus. This is one of the air plants. And this is a cryptanthus. And I'm going to be doing a care video on the cryptanthus very soon. It's a type of bromeliad, really easy care. Stay tuned for that. So check that blog post for more details for these, for these things that will help create a little bit of humidity. As I said, 
they aren't going to turn your your home into the rain for rain forest but they do seem to help out with my house plants and because my new home has so much light i am going to be doing a lot more planting or getting a lot more cacti and fleshy succulents for indoors because they tolerate the dry air better and they're just easier I have a growing succulents indoors series coming up in April and May so stay tuned for that about all things growing succulents indoors because with the tropical plants I still will get some tropical plants here and there but they um, just take a lot more water and they like a lot more humidity so cacti and succulents coming up in my house so I hope you have found this video to be helpful. I have a lot more videos coming your way about gardening both indoors and outdoors so stay tuned for those. I thank you for all your likes and your subscribes. I really appreciate them and your comments too. And now let's get out in our gardens or in this case into our indoor gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. As always, I thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye!